Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today is an exciting day and kind of a weird day because today we start the very last unit of AP Human Geography, which is just crazy. It seems like just yesterday we were learning about maps in unit one and now we're finishing up our very last unit. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how the Industrial Revolution transformed the world. The Industrial Revolution started in England between the mid 1700s and 1800s. We can see that there are a variety of different factors that led to the Industrial Revolution. Such as the growing workforce, access to raw resources like coal and iron, access to new capital, and new inventions and technology. Such as the steam engine, which allowed for more factories to operate with assembly lines and machines instead of relying solely on workers completing tasks by hand. The steam engine didn't just transform production, it also changed how states and companies traded. Ships could now travel greater distances and faster speeds and no longer needed to rely on the wind to help move them. The steam engine also also allowed for trains to transport different goods and people across vast swabs of land. Such was the case in the United States with the creation of the Transcontinental Railroad, which allowed for more trade across the country and increased the amount of migration of people from the east coast of the country to the west coast. We can also see how other inventions during the Industrial Revolution transformed life, such as the spinning jenny and the power loom, which transformed the textile industry. The spinning jenny was a machine that could spin several spools of thread at once, before individuals would have to do this task by hand, which was very time consuming. Later on in the Industrial Revolution, the power loom was created. This machine could weave cloths and tapestries and allowed for mass production in the textile industry. Both of these inventions helped reduce the cost of producing textiles, increase the affordability of different garments, and increase the output for companies. All of which was a great thing. Well, unless you worked in a cottage industry, then maybe not so much. A cottage industry is a business that is typically run from a person's home. Here, individuals use traditional techniques and tools to produce custom goods by hand. Before the Industrial Revolution, cottage industries were fairly prevalent across society. However, due to the ability of companies to be able to mass produce products, most of the cottage industries were put out of business. Industrialization also changed the social order of society, with new social classes emerging that were based on wealth. Now, before the Industrial Revolution, there was different social classes, but the Industrial Revolution saw the rise of the middle class as people were able to move up the social ladder for the first time. All of this was due to new jobs and opportunities that were created with the rise of factories and large-scale industries. Unfortunately, the benefits of the Industrial Revolution were not distributed equally among citizens. We can see that many workers experienced long hours, low wages, and poor working conditions. Factories now could operate almost 24 hours a day, and as new urban cities cities continued to grow and develop, they saw a new working class emerge, which unfortunately was often exploited by the factory owners. Now, not only did the Industrial Revolution impact social classes in society, but it also changed demographic trends as well. If we connect back to Unit 2 of this class, we know that the Industrial Revolution is what allowed states to enter Stage 2 of the demographic transition model. Remember, as countries enter Stage 2 when the Industrial Revolution is happening, the population growth takes off as people are now dying less, but at the same time, birth rates remain high. This increases the population growth of a society and allows for the population of the society to grow, which increases not only the size of the workforce, but the amount of consumers as well. And as urban areas continue to offer more economic opportunities, they continue to see changes in society's migration patterns. As more people continue to migrate from rural areas to urban areas, hoping to take advantage of some of these new economic opportunities that the urban areas offer. So we can see that the industrial the Industrial Revolution changed society's ability to be able to transport goods. It impacted their demographic trends, their economic opportunities, and migration patterns as well. But it also impacted their food production, which we can see if we look at the field of agriculture. <laughs> Get it? Field agriculture, you know, because you plant crops in a field. Ah, you'll get it next time. Okay, maybe that joke was a little bit too corny. <laughs> Corn agriculture. All right, no more, no more. We'll stop, we'll stop. We can see the impact of new agricultural technologies, which allowed for the mechanization of farming to occur, all of which decreased the reliance on human labor and increased the output of each farm. Plus, thanks to advancements in transportation, farmers could now ship their crops farther and faster, which allowed farmers to participate not only in their local market, but markets around the country and eventually the world. As time went on, we eventually saw the enclosure movement occur, 
which allowed for farms to become even more efficient, leading to even more output from farms and increased the amount of urbanization. As small farmers left rural areas and migrated to cities in search of better economic opportunity. We can also see that the Industrial Revolution contributed to the rise of colonialism and imperialism. As industrialized countries sought more raw resources, labor, and markets to expand to. For example, we could look at the Berlin Conference, also known as the Scramble for Africa, where European powers divided up the continent of Africa and created state boundaries based on convenience for European power. In fact, colonization in Africa led to the creation of infrastructure and political systems that were designed not to create a stable state, but rather designed for the exportation of goods and resources out of the area. European countries continued to use their colonies to gain access to the vast resources located inside the continent, such as gold, iron, rubber, diamonds, and oil, just to name a few. If you remember, we last talked about this back in our Unit 4 Topic 2 video. So we can see that the Industrial Revolution was a big deal. In fact, we can actually see that in this video alone, we've already connected back to every single unit in the class in one way or another, which is pretty cool if you think about it. Everything now is starting to come together. We can also see that the Industrial Revolution changed life forever. It increased the standard of living in countries around the world. It allowed for greater food surplus to occur, shifted migration patterns, reshaped social classes, and increased the amount of global interaction. But unfortunately, it also increased the amount of inequality between different people and states, and led to uneven economic development to occur around the world. So we can see that the Industrial Revolution transformed the very fabric of society. Now is the time, though, to practice what we've learned, to answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, check your answers in the comment section and description below. Remember, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing, and check out my ultimate review packet for more help with your AP Human Geography studies. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.